Welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome. If you're new here, my name is Jen. I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. And today, today we're talking about the five worst foods that you're eating that's slowing your metabolism. I don't know about you, but I need my metabolism running at its peak performance so that we can lose weight and maintain our weight. So these five foods are slowing your metabolism. Let's talk all about them and why. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Down in the description box, I will link nutrition coaching. Highly recommend having your personalized macros and calories done so you can eat enough to keep your metabolism fired up and revved up and weight loss in its peak performance. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things that are nice and healthy for you are also down in that description box. So let's jump into the five worst foods for your metabolism and why. First, let's define what is your metabolism. Let's talk about it in more scientific terms. Metabolism includes a myriad of processes that regulate chemical and metabolic functions from body temperature to cell turnover, digestion, blood circulation, hormone regulation, and breathing. It also is the major means of converting what we eat and drink to calories and fuel for energy to sustain life. Metabolism is generally synonymous for calories in, calories out, how we burn through those calories, how we lead to weight, how our body loses weight, how our body maintains weight. It's synonymous for energy in, energy out. There are many, many factors that influence our metabolic rate. Genetics, muscle mass, age, sex, physical activity, and the foods that we're eating. There are some foods out there that benefit our metabolism. And then there are some foods out there that can actually wreak havoc on our metabolism, sometimes slowing it down to the point that it's hard for us to lose weight and even maintain our current weight. We want to discuss the foods that are disrupting your metabolism, why they're a disruption, why they should be either eaten in pretty extreme moderation or avoided altogether. Food number one is going to be fatty cuts of steak. Now, this doesn't mean that all steak falls on this list. We're talking about very specific, higher fat cuts of steak. Regular consumption of high fat animal products in general contain a hefty amount of saturated fat. Now, saturated fat isn't bad in moderation, but we really want to focus on the healthier fats, the polyunsaturated, the monounsaturated fats, and eat the saturated fats in a little bit more moderation. Saturated fat increases your bad triglyceride levels or the bad fats in your body. That's why they're not the type of fat that we you want to lean on. High triglyceride levels also means high LDL or the bad cholesterol. When you're choosing the sources of protein that you want to eat, make sure you're looking at good low fat or high fat dairy, leaner cuts of meat such as chicken and fish. And if you're going to have steak, your best bet is to choose a leaner cut of steak, a flank steak. Number two is going to be millet. And you might be going, who eats millet? So the issue with millet is it affects your thyroid. And thyroid function and having a healthy thyroid is essential for weight loss and weight maintenance. If you have Hashimoto's disease or you suffer, suffer from an underactive thyroid, millet is not a food that you should be consuming on a regular basis. Also, if you've been diagnosed with an iodine issue, millet is off the list. Millet is considered a goitrogen, which comprises foods that contain goitrin, a compound that can interfere with the synthesis of thyroid hormones, inhibiting the effectiveness of our metabolism. That's why millet falls on this list. So there's some alternatives to millet that you can choose instead. Whole wheat, quinoa, and rice are great alternatives. Food number three may not come as much of a surprise, and this is going to be candy. It's no surprise, it's no shock that candy isn't helping out our health. The biggest issue with candy is the high intake of sugar. Added sugars, 50 grams or more for most adults in a day, can be linked to developing metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is when your metabolism slows, when your metabolism adapts, when it slows down, making it really, really hard to lose weight, and again, hard to maintain your weight loss. The scientific definition of metabolic syndrome is elevated fasting blood glucose, abdominal abdominal obesity, triglycerides, and blood pressure, as well as high-density HDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. All of these issues increase your risk of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular 
disease. So if you have a sweet tooth, if you're craving something sweet, lean on fruit. Fruit has naturally occurring sugar, but it also has fiber. It's going to give you natural sweetness anytime that you have a sugar craving. Number four is going to be ultra processed foods. Most food out there is processed. Even your frozen fruits and vegetables, the meat you're picking up in the meat counter, all of those are processed foods, but there's a difference between those foods and ultra processed foods. The definition of ultra processed foods are foods that have been dramatically manipulated from their natural state. These foods lead to insulin resistance and obesity. Examples of ultra processed foods are things like french fries, chips, apple pie, candy, a lot of the foods that are found in the inner aisles of your grocery store. They don't have to be fully eliminated from your diet. We never want to restrict or eliminate anything, but we should really scale back the amount of ultra processed foods that we're eating. 80% of your diet should be clean, real, whole food, and then 20% can include these ultra processed foods or foods that you love that may not fall on the healthy list. Try indulging in one serving of ultra processed foods every couple of days rather than on the daily. And number five, number five, may be a bit of a downer for a lot of you and that's going to be alcohol. You're right, you're right, alcohol's not a food, but most adults consume 3.6 alcoholic beverages over the course of one week. Alcohol actually fo follows an irregular digestion path in our body. It puts a lot of pressure on our liver to metabolize and when we consume alcohol, it's strictly a carbohydrate so it immediately turns to sugar in our body. And we talked about why having so much added sugar is detrimental for our metabolism and also for our weight. People who misuse alcohol have a dramatically increased risk of heart disease, stroke, sleep disorders, certain cancers, and of course, disordered liver function. Alcohol impacts several components of the metabolic process. The dietary guidelines for Americans suggest that adults consume no more than two adult beverages a day for men and one adult beverage a day for women on average. So if you love a good adult beverage, don't feel bad about having one a day or one or a couple over the weekend, we want to make sure that everything is balanced in our life, including our alcohol consumption. So those are the top five foods that can really wreak havoc on your metabolism. Let me know down in the comments if any of these surprised you, or if you kind of expected these items to fall on this list and why. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I upload new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I will link nutrition coaching down below for you. Highly recommend personalized macros and calories as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. I'll also link my favorite healthy things down below for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.